This week we're going to look at a quick and handy way to not only show sustained winds, but gusts on your plots. Welcome to another Met Pie Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I was looking at some plots from the Aviation Weather Center, and I noticed that I really liked how they showed sustained and gusts, and wanted to show you how to do that using Matplotlib. So in this map from the Aviation Weather Center, you can see that sustained winds are shown in black, with gusts shown in red. So for example, here we have 10 gusting 15. Or at OFK, we have 15 gusting 20. So let's see how we can do that in matplotlib, because there's not a way to specify a gust. We can just specify U and V components of the wind. So I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Import metpy.calc as mpcalc. Import numpy as mp. From metpy.units, I need to import the units registry because we're going to be doing calculations and those are all unit aware. And use our matplotlib inline magic. So we need to make some artificial wind data because when you're trying something for the first time in a script, it's best to use some known data and make sure that you're getting the result you think you should get. So I'm going to create some just x and y coordinates using numpy's mesh grid. Let's give ourselves four in the first dimension, three in the second. So if we were to look at that, x's and y's, so our x's are x-coordinate 0, 1, 2, 3, and our y's are coordinate 0, 1, 2. So we have four columns, if you will, and three rows. Now let's go ahead and create our wind speed array. And I'm going to do this pretty manually here so we can sort of get a feel for what we're going to see. So I'm going to use 0, 5, 8, and 10 knots. For the wind gust, we're going to create an array. The first row, we're going to have no gust. The second row, we're going to have a 5-knot gust. And the third row, we're going to have a 10-knot gust. So 0, 5, 8, and 10, that's our 0-knot gust. Then 5, 10, 13, and 15. Notice I picked a value that would require rounding, so I can make sure that works as I wish, because uh, we know that we round to get our barbs, since the barbs only go in increments of 5. And then finally, 10, 15, 18, and 20. Now let's go ahead and put units on these. Because we're going to have to do calculations. For wind direction, we're just going to make them all coming out of the northwest so that the plot is consistent. And we can also make sure uh, that we're getting something that makes sense there. So our wind direction, we're going to say MP ones like. So this says, give me an array that's all ones, but shaped like wind speed. And I'm going to multiply that by 315. And then units.degrees. Now we know that when we use the barbs plot function, it expects the U and V components of the wind. It does not take a speed and direction. So we need to break out the wind speed and wind direction into its components. We're going to use our unpacking syntax, U and V, MP, Calc, Wind Components, using tab complete there to help me. And if you forget what order things go in, we can always use Shift tab and look at our help and see that it is speed and direction. Now remember, those are expecting united arrays, so that's why we had to assign units. Wind speed, wind direction. We're going to do the same thing for our gusts, U gust. V gust, wind components. Now it's wind gust, W gust, and W dir. 
So now we have our U and V components. First, let's make a plot. Make sure that we can do the basic barb plot and that it comes out how we expect. I'm going to create a figure and an axis using plot.subplots. X.barbs, X, Y, U, V. Again, if you forget anything, you can always use the shift tab and look at the documentation. And let's just plot that and see what we get. All right, so there's our default barb plot. Notice that things are off screen a little bit. I'm gonna set some limits here, a YLAM of minus one, two, three. I'm gonna go ahead and set an XLAM of minus a half to three and a half. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Everything looks like we would expect right now. Zero, five, eight rounded to 10, and 10. So those barbs all look good. They're all out of the Northwest. So to plot the gusts, we're going to use another call to ax.barbs. And don't forget, if you're doing this on a map projection, you may need to project these coordinates. X, Y, U gust, V gust. Color is going to be red. And let's see what we get from our plot there. That's close to what we want, but it's not exactly. Notice that the red has plotted on top of the black. So we need to change the Z order. Now you could of course say, well, I'm just gonna change the order of these things in my plot, but that may not always work depending on where you are in your plot. So what we're going to want to do is specify a Z order. If we specify Z order of five and Z order of one, the lower number goes below. So in this case, we could specify a Z order of four and get the same thing. But if we specify a Z order of six, they're now plotting on top. So there we go. Now we've got the red below. The only thing that's not quite perfect on here is when we go from 5 to 15, the amount that that 5 is shifted in just very slightly changes, so we see a little bit of red peeking out from behind there. So that one's not quite pixel perfect, but the rest look pretty good overall. Now to remind ourselves what these barbs should be plotting, I'm going to put some text on the plot. So for x point, y point wind speed, wind gust, and zip. I need to call ravel because these are 2D arrays and I need them to be 1D to zip over them. Y dot ravel, wind speed ravel, wind gust ravel. I want to put text at XP and I'm going to offset it just a hair so that it isn't right at the center of our barb tip there. YP, and then I'm going to use an F string, the magnitude of wind speed, gusting to the magnitude of the gust speed. All right, so there we go. We can see that indeed 5 gust 15 is the one that has that slight offset. 5 gust 10 looks good. 8 gust 13 looks fine. Yep, so most of the rest of these look fine. Maybe you can see just a little bit of hints of red here and there on the ones with no gust condition. And sure, maybe zero gusting five doesn't really make sense, but it's always nice to test everything that you can think of. So this is a relatively simple tip, but something that illustrates using Z order, maybe a little bit different thinking on how to approach this problem and shows the value of testing it out, making sure that you understand what the program is going to do before you go throw real data at it. And it lets us make maps that look like the AWC. I hope that you found this useful, and I'll see you on next week's MapPy Monday.